Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to study another method in which nitrogen can be estimated. That is called Gelder's method. So the basic principle involved in this method is that we are reacting our organic compound with concentrated H2SO4, and the nitrogen in our organic compound gets converted to ammonium sulfate. In the second step, the ammonium sulfate that has obtained, that is obtained from the reaction of our organic compound and H2SO4 is further reacted with excess of NaOH such that liberation of ammonia takes place. So you can see that the reactions involved are given here where organic compound reacts with H2SO4 forming ammonium sulfate which further reacts with NaOH giving Na2SO4, NH3 and water. Now this liberated ammonia is again treated with excess of standard sulfuric acid according to the reaction that is mentioned here. Now we don't know how much of ammonia is evolved and because we don't know how much nitrogen is present in an organic compound. So we take an approximate amount of H2SO4 and once the reaction or once the entire ammonia is reacted with H2SO4, there is still some amount of uh, acid that is left and that is estimated by titration with standard alkali solution. Now the difference between the initial amount of acid that was taken and that left after the reaction gives the amount of acid that reacted with ammonia and from that we can easily determine that from the amount of ammonia that is produced we will be able to estimate the percentage of nitrogen in our organic compound. Let us quickly summarize what are the various reactions involved in this method. As you can see the first step is degradation of our organic compound or digestion. So here sample is digested with H2SO4 giving ammonium sulphate and carbon dioxide, water and sulphur dioxide are evolved. In the second step, this ammonium sulphate is treated with excess of NaOH giving us Na2SO4, water and ammonia. In the third step, what we do is we are capturing ammonia by reacting it with standard H2SO4 according to this particular reaction. Now the last step is titration where we are reacting the leftover acid with excess of NaOH according to this particular reaction. So these are the various reactions involved in Gelder's method. It's important to also note that this particular method is not used for uh, every compound. That is, if our nitrogen is present in our organic compound as a ring or pyridine, we know that the structure of pyridine is nothing but this, which is similar to benzene with one carbon replaced by nitrogen. So when nitrogen is present in the ring form or pyridine or as nitro or diazo group, diazo is when this particular group that is N double bond N group in this particular cases this particular method Gelder's method fails that is mainly because under these conditions nitrogen does not get converted to ammonium sulphate in these groups that is primarily why uh, Gelder's method will not be applicable for those compounds in which nitrogen is present as pyridine in the ring form or nitro or diazo group. The most common application of Gelder's method is usually in food industries, fertilizers and drugs. Now let us have a quick look at what are the various apparatus used in this particular method. So that is the first one Gelder's digestion flask where we carry out the first step that is digesting our organic compound with H2SO4. In the second step what we do is we are transferring the content from the Gelder's flask to a round bottom flask where we are reacting ammonium sulphate with NaOH. The last component is nothing but titration flask where we carry out the titration with excess of H2SO4 that is unused. So these are the three major components of the Gelder's method which is digestion flask, round bottom flask and titration flask. In the next video we are going to quickly understand how to derive the percentage of nitrogen formula using Gelder's method here. Thank you.